Hey guys, Ricky from Ricky's Pretties. Today I'm going to be talking about a little bit about a project that I've started, um, which is a Four Seasons journal. I had this idea to where I'm going to put four signatures in it, and I'm going to separate the signatures with paintings of a tree in spring, summer, fall, and winter. And I chose a cherry tree because cherry trees change their clothes every season. They look absolutely beautiful no matter what season it is. They have beautiful flowers in the spring. They have pretty foliage in the summer and they have gorgeous yellow and orange leaves in the fall and then snow covered. They're beautiful in the winter time. So I've gotten the spring painting done. And I know this is a big, it's going to be an A4 journal, maybe a little bigger if I have to make it bigger in order to accommodate the picture that I painted. I will, um, but um, I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do with this once I get to that point. But I've painted the spring version. This is my spring cherry tree. And then this is my summer version. And then I'll be painting the fall and winter versions with you guys here. But first, what I wanted to do today is go over the color wheel because I've talked about doing that in the past. I feel like it's valuable information for everybody, whether you paint or not, because you can use it in um, in whatever you're doing, your journals, your paintings, your, um, you know, your little things that you make every day. All of your creations can benefit from knowledge from the color wheel if you are using any type of color because... Um, you will learn how to make things look brighter. You will learn how to mix color, which in this economy is really important because it's expensive to have to go out and buy 50 million tubes of paint just to get the colors you want. And so we're going to kind of go over it. Some of it may be elementary. If you find it's too elementary, you can skip on ahead to a section where you might find more valuable or you can skip the video altogether. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Just whatever you want to do. Um, but here we go. This is what we're going to start off with. I'm going to show you these. If you have these four colors, you can mix any color you want. Red yellow, blue, and white. That is all you need in order to mix any color you want. You don't need to go out and buy 50 tubes of paint. You can make any color you want as long as you have these four. And I'm going to show you how. Here we have our color wheel. I'm going to turn this over for now because we'll get to that in a minute. This is messy. Sorry, I got stuff on it. But here we have our color wheel. I'm going to tilt it so that the light's not glaring on it. Um, but our primary colors are what I just showed you, our blue, yellow, and red, and then white, you'll need to make different hues. We'll get to white in a minute. Now, when you mix yellow with red, everybody knows from kindergarten you get orange, and when you mix red with blue, you get violet, and when you mix blue with yellow, you get green, right? Okay, and then if you mix your green with your yellow, you get yellow-green, the secondary, you know, so if you mix yellow and blue to get green, green is called the secondary color. And if you mix yellow and green together, you get yellow green, which is a tertiary color. And you can just keep going on and on and on. You can mix yellow with yellow green. You can get, um, and you can just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. As long as you have this color wheel for reference, you can make any color of the rainbow that you want. Okay, now basic right yes but now we're going to get into how to actually use this information to your advantage you see these little arrows that i've drawn here right okay so i haven't drawn it to the tertiary colors because we're just going to talk about the primary colors and the secondary colors for now so you see that violet and yellow are opposites on the color wheel right okay that, that is called a complementary color. When you place complementary colors next to each other, they brighten each other up. But when you mix complementary colors together, they cancel each other out. And here's where we're going to go over this here. So here's our complementary colors. Side by side, we have green and red 
and then we have orange and blue, and then we have yellow and purple, and they'll kind of hold it up. Side by side, they make each other brighter, which is why red and green look so pretty for Christmas. And if you're from Oklahoma like I am, you will notice our thunder uniforms are blue and orange. And that did not happen by accident. I guarantee you whoever designed those uniforms had the color wheel in mind when they designed them because they look really bright and awesome on the court, on the basketball court. And you'll see that. And Mother Nature, when she created her little blue and purple pansies that bloom in the fall and into the spring, she didn't make any mistakes by having blue, I'm um, sorry, uh, purple and yellow side by side. And I've seen orange and blue pansies, even Mother Nature. You can find this in nature. Now, when you mix it together, you'll see they cancel each other out. What do I mean? That's how you get brown. You mix complementary colors together to get brown. Any two complementary colors together are gonna get, yeah, is going to give you brown. Okay, now, let's talk about black and white. Now, you may find this as a surprise, but... Uh, black is actually not a color and white is not a color. And what I mean by that is that black is the absorption of all colors and white is the reflection of all colors. So to get black, you mix all three of your primary colors together and you're going to get black. That's how you make black. You mix them all together, they're not going to give you brown. If you mix them all together, you're going to get the color black because black absorbs everything. It, do, it doesn't reflect anything. It just, everything is like a black hole. That's why they call it a black hole because it just absorbs everything. Everything gets sucked into it and it's just black. It creates black. There's no color at all. It just makes black. And white reflects all colors. Now, I don't know if you can see if you're going to be able to see this or not, but I'm going to try it. So like, let's turn this over. And you see this page is white, correct? Okay. But it's not really. I mean, because we see a little bit of a shadow over here and it's because these dark lids are sitting next to it. Now, if I put this red here, I don't know if you can see this on here or not. Probably not, but you can see that right next to it, there's a little bit of pink. And it kind of gives it a pink issue. Now, you might, you'll be able to see this better. If I was to do this, let's make a shadow here. Now, you can see here, this white is not white anymore. It's gray. It's got different shades of gray, even. It's got a lighter gray here, and it's got a dark gray here. And it's got, you know, I'm trying to make the shadow where you can see it. But you can see there's different shades in here. Okay, different shades. Different shades. Maybe if I got something else. I don't know. This isn't making a good shadow, is it? But you can kind of see what it does. It changes this. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about it because um, I'll give you I'll give you some examples to think about. So, like... Let's say you have a lighthouse, okay, a, a lighthouse, and it's on a little cliffside, and here is the ocean out here, and there's a sunset over here, and then there's some green grass over here. This lighthouse that's white is not really going to be white, because remember, it reflects its surroundings. So on this side of the lighthouse, down here where the ocean is, it's going to be blue, and up here where the sunset is, it might be pink and yellow. And on the back side here, it's in shadow, so it's going to be gray like my shadow here. And at the very base of it, there's going to be a little bit of green because it's going to be reflecting the green grass. So you're not going to paint that lighthouse white. You're going to paint it gray, green, a little bit of blue gray and some yellow and some pink. It's going to have all these different colors in it because white reflects all colors. 
And when I get to, now when I get to the painting that we do for winter time, um, if you want to understand that better, we'll be doing some of that because we're going to be painting snow. So I can explain that and show you a little better when I get to that painting if you, if you want to tune into that one. Now we're going to go over a couple of other things about the color wheel just to kind of get you to understand more about color um, and how to use it. Value is how dark or light a color is. So when you um, think about value, you know, from dark to light, that's value. And that's important when painting skies, especially because if you go outside and look and you get to where you can see the horizon, you will see that down at the horizon level where, where the land meets the sky, it's going to be lighter down here than it is up here in the stratosphere because as you go up into space the blue gets darker and darker so if you just paint a flat blue sky it's not going to look that realistic but if you use this value and you graduate the paint to where your lighter color is down here and your darker color is up here you'll see it's going to look a lot more natural now i did that you can especially see it here in this painting. See up here where the highest part of the sky, it's darker blue, but down in here, it's lighter blue where it makes, meets the land. It makes it look more natural. And now this one is more all blue, you know, it's more blue, but I still did that, see? This is a little bit darker hue and we'll get to hue in a minute, but um, the value is still there. It's lighter down here and darker up here. And it makes it look more realistic. Okay. So now hue is different shades of the same color. In the same color family. So here we have the color family red. But we have all these different hues of red. We have this um, true red. And then we have an orangey red. And then we have kind of a bluish red. And then a, a purple red. We have all these different. There are so many different colors of red that you can make. Um just by mixing a little white into it, a um, little brown. You can make all different shades of red. And so no matter whether it's red or purple or green or blue, different shades within the same color family is what we call hue. All right. And that's the basics of the color wheel. If you get this, if you, I got this from a book, but you can find copies of the color wheel online. And you can print it off. And it, or if you just want to take a snapshot of this, feel free to do that because I've circled your primary colors and you can, I've drawn the little arrows, but you can get one and draw your own little arrows on there and that will help you to remember that yellow and violet are opposites on the color wheel. So let's say, um, and I'll be going over this um, in the paintings that I do, but let's say, you know, I'm going to be painting a yellow and orange leafy tree. So what do I do if I want certain parts of that tree to look brighter where I have the yellow leaves? I just put in a few dots of purple and that's going to brighten that section of the tree up. Or I have orange leaves if I put in a few dots of blue here and there for the shadows instead of, you know, black, instead of just thinking that shadows have to be black. I put some blue in there and that's going to make that yellow pop. Um, you can add a touch of, if you're painting yellow flowers in the grass, you can shade it, you know, underneath the yellow flowers, you can shade it with some purple. You can add some purple to the grass and it'll make those yellow flowers stand out. If you're painting blue bonnets, then put a little orange in the grass around the blue bonnets and that will really make those blue bonnets pop. So that's how you kind of use the color wheel to your advantage. And I'll be going over that as I as I complete the painting that I'm going to be doing with you guys. Um, but I just wanted to go over this with you real quick and kind of show you what it is so that you will understand what I'm talking about when I actually do the painting. If you have any questions, you know, if you have any comments, you can... Um, let me know down in the bottom. Now I am in, you know, I'm just going to make this disclaimer. I am not a professional artist per se. Um, I have had, you know, as we say in Oklahoma, occasionally schooling. <laughs> I've been schooled in the, in the, in the art category. Um, 
And I am a semi-pro, I guess, because I have done professional paintings for people, mostly pet portraits. Here's a couple for you to see. Um, but yeah, I definitely know what I'm doing. So, um, there you have it. That's my disclaimer. And this is my video. And I will see you guys next time when we start painting our next tree. Bye-bye.